Assalamu alaikum. This is Shahzil from Oxford Pakistan Policy Network. Today, my guest needs little or no introduction. Uh, she was a former teacher who made a name in her in a, a name and a career in politics. Uh, she is now a former member of uh, National Assembly, currently a senior uh, PTI leader, and also runs her own think tank, uh, Strategic Studies Institute Islamabad. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shireen, for being with us today. Just it was a short, short introduction. Before we get started, I would just love to know uh, how you started your career in politics from a teacher and a political analyst to an actually policy maker. Well, it began from teaching at the university in Islamabad, no, actually Karachi University, then Kaidiazm University. Then I ventured into journalism for a couple of years, then headed the foreign office think tank in Islamabad. And I had made a commitment to Imran that if I ever gave up my academic slash journalistic career, I would join PTI because when he formed the party, he had come to see me. And I lived right. up to that commitment. The mo moment I left the institute uh, in Islamabad, I went to Imran and said, OK, I'm joining PTI. So it, that's that. Nothing very uh, interesting or, you know, <laughs> strange. No, no. So it was smooth sailing, I'm guessing, until you joined PTI, and that's when the struggle started. <laughs> <laughs> and that's in a good not, way, though. I'll say that. Uh, it's, it's not a struggle. It's not a struggle. It's been a major learning experience. Uh, you know, absolutely. politics, uh, if being a member of a political party, really teaches you discipline and tolerance. Because while I was in academics and while I was doing journalism or even research, I could do what I want. I, if I didn't like people, I didn't have to put up with them. So, but in politics, you come into a political party, there are a lot of people you have to tolerate, there are a lot of people you have to work with, and there are a lot of mm -hmm. fools you have to put up with. <laughs> Absolutely. I was yeah. saying, being on that point where you have to deal with uh, decisions that you don't agree with, or sometimes people that you do not see eye to eye with, how is it working in a uh, in a party which is which is known to be more democratic than others and where you have debates, I hope openly, and where some of the decisions would go against what you would want. Are you still able to take that uh, forward or how do you deal with that? I think it's, um, uh, I could only probably uh, survive in PTI. This is a party where open debate is conducted. In fact, sometimes we tend to go overboard with the openness of the debate, but I think uh, better to err on the side of freedom than on restraints. Um, and yes, there are a number of issues on which a lot of people, including me, do not agree with. But once we have been consulted, we have discussed, and the decision is taken, then it is our moral obligation and our political obligation to stand by that decision of the party. And it has happened on a number of occasions where I have disagreed, but once you're in the party, then you have to abide by the discipline. Or if you feel so strongly, then you should leave the party. Makes sense. But uh, the problem with such an approach is what we've seen recently with the names of uh, caretaker chief minister being uh, contentious at times, or even there's a huge uh, gap between what's going on and what the party wants and what is being given to the media. Yes, unfortunately, uh, in the case of the KP name, uh, the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa name that was suggested, it had come up without any consultative process. So obviously the party then discussed and rejected it. And uh, in the case of Punjab, uh, we have sadly blundered. And again, because uh, the consultative process was uh, kept very short, it was not done extensively. And frankly, we should have done our homework earlier. And But you live and learn. And I think the greatness of P, the PTI leadership, especially Imran Khan, is that he admits that we make great mistakes. And when we admit to our mistakes and we seek to rectify them, I think that is also uh, a, a, an approach that should be appreciated because we're all human and nobody is totally infallible. So I think that is the human side of Imran. Not that I'm saying we should make these mistakes, but the fact is if we do make them and there are our mistakes and Khan then takes the responsibility on himself also and we try and rectify the situation rather than, you know, totally 
going into a state of denial and saying, no, what we are doing is right. No, there are times when we have been mistaken and we have admitted and we have corrected course. But this does lead to a perception, at least, of disorganization within the PTI ranks. Um, from my own personal experience that I saw in elections during uh, local government elections, the PTI camps would be less organized. But not just that, it seemed like the PTI has multiple leaders within the same constituency. And then when one leader is given the ticket and the others aren't, the, those the others then play foul or work against the PTI leader. Uh, one of the problems in PTI has been that we suddenly have got an influx of new members. So our organizational structure, which really existed before the onslaught of an, uh, or a host of new entrants coming at the same time, that structure has not really been able to cope very effectively. So that is one reason why you see this sort of disorganization, you may call it, or discord. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think that uh, we do come out all right. I think that it will take us time to reorganize the ground, uh, the structures at the ground, uh, uh, you know, at the uh, local levels. And I think that uh, we will eventually be able to have a system. But you have to remember that this onslaught of new people coming has been over the last couple of years only. And, it, and, uh, and in the last elections, of course, we had a big disadvantage because the chairman got injured right at the crucial minute when the elections uh, campaign was picking up. And we had to, uh, you know, so there was even more disorganization with the chairman laid in bed. But I think that, yes, it's not that there are too many leaders it's that we give a lot more flexibility and authority to local level leadership. So it seems as if there are too many leaders, but I don't think that that is the case. I think that we want to build up consensus from the local level up. We don't want to impose decisions all the time from the top. Right. But that that is a little different in the sense that, uh, let's say there are two candidates. And this is this is not just I can name the places jumping like in South Punjab, Rahimia Khan me who I believe, uh, Bhavan Lagar me hua, uh, and then Okada me jo election hua tha apka, just me ap logo ne Sohana saab ko choose kiya tha uh, instead of other candidates that were available. But in all of these three constituencies, it felt ke not just it felt it happened ke the other candidates started uh, campaigning against the PTI candidate. I believe Azam Swati ne bhi yehi kiya that, during the uh, elections. <coughs> that is unfortunate. It happens across Pakistan. Uh, it's not just in PTI. Uh, but yes, after all, we are getting a lot of people uh, from other parties who are disgruntled with their parties, who feel they will not get tickets in their parties. So unfortunately, because uh, very few parties have differing ideologies except for the religious parties, um, people feel they can switch sides. PTI has a definitive ideology, but the newcomers take time to realize that if they've entered PTI, they have to abide by certain ideological norms. Uh, they assume we are like all the other political parties, so you can hop from one to the other, and it really makes right. no difference because if you see PMLN, the new PPP even, if you see QLeague, uh, people have been through all these parties and have adjusted quite easily because there's only a opportunistic political ethos, there's no ideology. A lot of newcomers who are coming into PTI will are finding themselves at, a, at sea because it's not the sort of party that mm. is uh, without an ideology. And the newcomers, when they come in very happily, find that they cannot really adjust. So we will have people who may be leaving. We will have people who are disgruntled. This is unfortunately the political culture in Pakistan that prevails at the moment. And I think over a period of time when you've had three or four governments that have completed their terms, the structures of democracy will become more refined, more stabilized. Right, right. So then let's, let's have a, a scenario. Let's say that PTI wins 2018 elections. Let's say these newcomers who are uh, also called electables, 
they help you win the elections. What happens year down the road when there is a party decision that is not a popular one and they disagree with? Is there not a good chance because they do not believe uh, they do not believe in the uh, PTI uh, ideology that they'll form a forward bloc? They can form a forward bloc, but a decision that PTI will make, it can't be unpopular because it will have had the support of the majority. PTI will not make a decision that only a minority in the party supports, especially if it's a parliamentary party. Then I, I, we, even this, uh, the last five years, we worked as a consensus group. We used to have parliamentary party meetings and we would decide positions by consensus or by majority. But yes, there is always a chance that there will be a forward block, but a forward block will find it difficult to uh, sustain itself because now there are rules that you can't do floor crossing. You cannot vote against the party on major issues and the party can always then should give you a show cause and throw you out of the party. And at the end of the day, I am pretty sure that if we have people who strongly disagree with what uh, the chairman and the majority of the party wants to do, then the chairman will be quite happy to let go of these people, even if it means that we would have early elections or we would sit in the opposition, because there are core issues on which the PTI leadership and the PTI members are not prepared to compromise. What do you think would be three main uh election uh, agenda across the board, or, or not just election agenda, what would be your three main concerns for where Pakistan is headed right now? I think the biggest issue is corruption. Pakistan has, I mean, PTI has actually now brought every citizen of this country an awareness, brought an awareness to them about the corruption and the damage that corruption is doing. Because of corruption, we have no development, we have no jobs, and that brings me to the second issue of concern, that providing people with opportunities, with jobs, and of course, the other major issue that is going on right now in the heat of summer is the energy issue. The, uh, you know, right. lack of electricity, lack of water, especially in the major urban centers. Um, so these are issues that are going to play a major role. Uh, and we have already... Uh, started giving out our program of how actually we can overcome these problems. Um, we gave a commitment of creating X number of jobs and there was a hue and cry by the other parties that this is ridiculous, you can't do it. But we then proceeded to give a detailed plan of how we would do this job creation. So I think that this time in the elections, it will not just be about personalities, there will be very real issues on which voters will have to decide where they want to choose their future. Okay. My next point you will probably disagree with, but the I was looking at the 100-day uh, agenda, right? And of course it talks about the issues that are important. It, it touches all of those things. But the plan put forward looks very Trump-esque, where it is that we are going to create new jobs, but to create new jobs, you need the money. Where are we going to get the money? Or are we going to uh crawl back the money that was either uh, taken out of the country or through or, or through corrupt uh, uh, measures what not but these things well is it well we have, we have I'm glad you asked me that about the, where will the money come from I by the way I'm not an economist but anyhow um, <laughs> we are very clear that when Imran Khan comes to power, the money will come and it will come from our overseas Pakistanis who are waiting to help build Pakistan, but they have not trusted the leadership because the corruption of the past leadership has been so evident. And Imran Khan has proven that he, A, he is not corrupt, he lives up to his commitments, and he has been able to mobilize Pakistanis at all levels to raise money, whether it was Shokat right. Khanum, whether it was Namal College, he has the ability to do that fundraising. And we are placing a lot of faith in our overseas Pakistanis and also giving encouragement and easy facilities to our local investors. 
not just looking for foreign direct investment, but also encouraging local enterprises and local businesses which have shut down to restart. So we will be having a business friendly, uh, we will be having business friendly policies also. So I think that we are not worried. We are absolutely convinced that Imran Khan has the ability to bring in massive investment from our overseas mm -hmm. Pakistani. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sheen Mazari. We will continue this talk and this chat with uh, our guests in our next program. Stay tuned, and I hope to see you uh, soon again. Thank you.